Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome back to our immersive engineering tutorial series. Well, we've talked about the excavator, we've found our minerals, we've built it, we've gotten a lot of ores. Now, we need a way to smelt them. We've uh, we got a way to mine them, we got a way to crush them into dust. Now we got to smelt it into usable ingots. And that's where the arc furnace comes in. It's another very complex multi-block. I think this is the most complex multi-block in immersive engineering right now. Uh, it's a complex machine, but I'll walk you through it, and uh, we'll have a really good time. So we've already talked about everything we need to build it, so we got no blocks to craft at the moment. We'll build the machine, and then we'll talk about it, okay? So if we go into our handbook, we can find the arc furnace under heavy machinery. We'll show you how to build it, and it'll talk to you about how to use it. Now, this thing can make steel, so once you have the arc furnace, you uh, can use that to make steel instead of using your uh, coke oven. I mean, your blast furnace. To build this, you're going to require one cauldron, 14 steel slabs, four blocks of steel, 27 re reinforced blast bricks, 14 light engineering blocks, 7 heavy engineering blocks, and 10 steel scaffolding. Slabs of steel are crafted the same way you craft slabs of wood. It's just 3 steel blocks in a line. Okay? Alright. Here's how you craft the arc furnace. It's 5 by 5 blocks. And the, so we're going to go through this um, and hopefully this will make some sense. So at the back of the of the machine, you'll place down three blocks of heavy engineering block. Okay, right, just like that. On either side of that, you'll have two steel scaffolding running like this. Okay, then place a block of steel at the end of each. On the left side, skip a block and place a light engineering block. Skip a block to the right of that and place your cauldron. The cauldron will be right in the middle at the front. Then fill the rest of the area in with steel slabs. That's the bottom row. Okay, you're done with steel slabs. That's what they're all for. Remember that the cauldron's at the front. The heavy engineering blocks are at the back. The second layer, you'll add another light engineering block on top of the first. At the back, you'll add three light engineering blocks on top of the three heavy engineering blocks. In the back corners, you'll have a heavy engineering block followed by a steel scaffolding just in front of that on each side, followed by a heavy engineering block in front of that on each side. Then you'll fill in that area with six reinforced blast bricks in a 3 by 2 configuration, just like that. It, it fits right in there. One layer above that, you'll put five light engineering blocks along the back, okay? Skip a space on the uh, edges and place a block of steel. They'll, those will go uh, on top of the heavy engineering blocks that you placed before. Then you're going to place a three block by four block area of reinforced blast bricks. They'll come all the way to the front. Okay, just like that. On top of that, at the back, you'll place a light engineering block in the middle, a steel scaffold on each side, and a three by three area of reinforced blast bricks just in front of that. It'll look like this. Okay. Then, for the last layer, you'll place a line of three light engineering blocks coming from the back of the machine in the middle towards the front. And on each side of that, you'll place a steel scaffolding at the back. Remember to, uh, you know, use the handbook. It will show you layer by layer how to build it. It's complex, but I know you can do it. Once this is built, all you need to do is right click on the cauldron with your engineer's hammer. If you did it right, it'll turn into an arc furnace. Which looks really, really cool, I gotta say. The arc furnace does look really cool. Alright, now we're gonna talk about how this thing works. Alright, let's. If you right click, you can't right click just anywhere to get into the machine. You need to either right click on the bucket in the front where the cauldron was. Right click on the little redstone panel where you can put a lever, or right click on the central bucket. Okay. Basically, if you have a mod, if you have a mod pack with Wayla installed, if Wayla shows up, 
you can right click to get into the machine. Now, the GUI might look a little confusing, um, but it's really not that difficult, okay? We've got a power meter on the right. These 12 slots on the left are for your ore inputs, your, your, your dust inputs, whatever you're going to smelt in here, okay? So you can have 12 stacks of stuff in here at once. It's pretty awesome. The little line you can see next to each slot is the heat meter. They they will smelt individually um, all together. That's their the heat meter um, and how close they are to being smelted in each individual stack. Okay. The top row here is for uh, electrodes. You have to add graphite electrodes into this, and we'll go over and I'll show you how to craft those. And you need to be there in order for the machine to operate. The four slots on the right are for additives. These are things like the coke dust that lets you make coal, okay? Additives. They'll fed in, they're fed into the machine, uh, and I'll show you where that happens uh, in a minute. And at the bottom here, these are the output slots. Output slots, okay? As well as this slot. This slot here is for slag. Slag will appear here as it smelts. So you get six output slots and then a slag output, all right? So that's the that's the GUI. It's just a lot of, you know, inputs and outputs. Now let's take a look at the physical machine. So at the front here, this is where you get your items. So this is the port that outputs the finished product, the ingots that you're crafting. Okay. So put a conveyor belt in front of here. Put a chest in front of it. Put a pipe on it. Anything like that, and this is where it'll come out. That little port right there. Okay. If we head around to the back. This is where you plug in the power. You got three power ports. Okay, this takes a lot of power. So you got three power ports here that will attach them to a diesel engine or something like that. This port here is for outputting slag. So slag will come out of here if you put an inventory there. Now, if you allow the slag, um, come on, if you allow the slag slot to fill up, it'll stop running. So you got to make sure that you output the slag. So you can just put a chest here if you want. Any inventory, any pipe, or any conveyor belt, and it'll automatically output the slag. Right? There's nothing on the sides. And if we come to the top, these are the two inputs. Okay? On the left is where you input the items that you want to go into these slots. Okay? The, the inputs for dusts and stuff that you want to smelt. And on this side, is where you input additives so you can put the additives in uh, in on here okay things like coke dust now if I click on the recipes we can see what you can make you can make all kinds of stuff now you'll notice here the power requirement for these recipes 512 RF per tick for a hundred ticks okay 51,200 RF for you know smelting this so it takes a lot of power but it's very quick so 512 RF per tick for these recipes. So you can put, you know, copper and nickel together to get constantin, you know, to get various things. So this thing can be used for alloying. Uh, you can get electrum, put gold and silver in there. Um, now you'll notice there's four slots here. This would be the additive that you're adding. Okay. So the silver would go. To, I'm going to demonstrate at least one of these. Okay. Invar, iron dust, and ferrous. And if we keep going, we'll find you know, red alloy. This is stuff from different mods. Uh, we got uh, electrical steel from another mod, aluminum brass, energetic alloy. All this stuff that you find from different mods, it'll craft all of them. Dark steel. That's the alloy. We can go over. Now we have the ores. So ores take longer to smelt than the alloys. 512 RF per tick for 200 ticks. Okay, And you get slag out of there. Okay, so don't forget that you get slag out of there. So you can put the ore blocks in, and you get two ingots. All these various ore blocks you can smelt. Then you get recycling. You can put things in here like monocles, tit titanium axes. Basically, there's a lot of stuff. Various tools you can put in here and get the uh, the ingots back um, for the materials that you use to craft it. That's pretty cool. There's a lot of these on the, in this mod pack. There's you know a ton of them, um, all different stuff from different mods. So you can put light engineering blocks in here, get some of the resources back. It's pretty cool. All right, that's recycling. Then the standard recipes. So you can put iron ingots in, and then coke dust in the additive slots to get steel. 
That takes 400 ticks, so that takes uh, longer than the ore smelting. You could just smelt, um, you know, ore dusts, and that takes 100 ticks, so it's it, it's faster than that. Um, so as you can see here, there's, there's lots of recipes. You know, you can smelt flux electrum, all these different things from different mods. So, now, graphite rods. You can see it's at the top here. You need those. All right. Let's go over here, and I'll show you how to craft them. All right. So, in order to craft the graphite electrodes, you need to get a workbench, and you need to get the blueprint. So remember, if you take a blueprint, you can put it in here in the workbench in order to craft certain things. Now, you cannot craft the engineer's blueprint for the graphite rods. You have to find it or trade from it for a, from a villager. Or if you're on a server, I don't know, get it from somebody, buy it from somebody, who knows. So, in the Stronghold Library, there is a 5.5% chance of finding it. In the Blacksmith, in the dungeon, dungeon chest thing, in the Blacksmith, you have a... where is it? Come on. 0.5% chance in this current in this pack. It'll be different in different packs. And in the uh, the villager crates, you'll end up with like a 1% chance. Apparently, you can also trade for it from various uh, villagers. Um, do, 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 graphite electrodes. Um, it tells me about graphite electrodes here. Uh, blueprint, which you can find in certain chests or trade with a villager, okay? So you're going to have to acquire the blueprint for these graphite electrodes in order to craft them. Once you have it, you're going to need four HOP graphite ingots in order to craft one graphite electrode, okay? And you're going to want three of them. Now, how do you get the HOP graphite ingots? Well, the answer is you need to use the industrial squeezer, okay? You need to put eight coke dust in the industrial squeezer. You get that from putting coal coke into the crusher okay coke dust so I got one here put the eight coke dust into the in, uh, into the squeezer and it will apply pressure to and uh, as you can see here it's running the recipe it doesn't take too long and you will get HOP graphite dust okay once you have your HOP graphite dust you need to smelt it in a furnace or you know in an arc furnace uh, to get your HOP graphite ingot. Why does it take two? Does it craft? It crafts uh, two at once? I don't know. Because here you need one HOP graphite dust to craft one HOP graphite ingot. Okay. Once you have one ingot, you need to get four ingots, and then you can craft them into a graphite electrode. So it takes a lot of graphite, which is quite a bit of, of coal coke. So four of them, graphite electrode. Okay. Now I got two of them. They don't stack because they have uh, durability, okay? That's something you gotta keep in mind when you make this machine, is that these electrodes will uh, degrade over time. So let's go ahead and throw them into our slots. You can shift click them in, and you'll see they actually appear at the top of the machine, which is really awesome. Okay, so you can see up there how many you have. All right, let's apply some power to this thing. Um, I'm gonna use some HV capacitors. They're not going to last very long, but we'll throw them on there. Let's see if that's giving it power. Nope, got to hit him again. Ah, where am I? Uh, shift right click on these changes the um, input on the other side. There we go, power. So we got these. We've got uh, 100 and wait, how much is in here? We got four. We got 12 million RF in those three capacitors. See how long that lasts in our arc furnace. All right, let's find out. So let's throw some stuff in here, shall we? I have some ore that we got from our uh, our, our our thing, our um, excavator. So I don't know. Let's throw some in, and we can see what starts to happen. The the heat meter rises. The graphite electrodes are taking damage, and when that bar rises, it smelts one. So, in order to smelt at the optimum speed, you want to split it up between all of these um, slots, because then you're smelting simultaneously. All right, this is a lot like a lot like a blast furnace in um, Rotary Craft. You want to spread your 
things out so that you can smelt more at once. And you got 10 slag here out of smelting these 20 silver ingots. And it really didn't take very long at all. Okay, let's try some alloying. Now that we've done that, let's try some alloying. We'll get some dusts here. Um, we'll get uh, some gold. Go away. Gold and silver grit. Okay. Wait, no. I'm supposed to use... I'm supposed to use ingots, I think. If I put the gold grit in here, put the silver ingots in here, does that work? Yes, it does. So you want one, in order to do this, you want one of them to be an ingot. And then I can put the gold grits over there and we get, we end up with uh, 12 electrum. And if I put some more silver ingots in here, um, we'll end up with more electrum. Pretty cool. Very nice. So we got, we did some alloying. Let's make some steel. So in order to make some steel, we're going to grab some iron. Um, and we're going to grab some coke dust. So there's our coke dust. Now let's grab some, well, let's grab some iron dust and see if it works. Where is it? Is there iron dust here? Well, there it is. I should have known what that, that was. So our coke dust goes in the slots over here. And can we use... Iron? Yeah, but there we go. Iron grit. We got it in there. Now it's going slowly. Remember, because making steel is slower. Our electrode is decaying. Electrodes. And then when this rises all the way, we'll have steel. Boom. Steel ingots. From our coke dust and our iron grit. Okay, very cool. Let's see. How much power have we burned through? Well, let's let this run. Now, let's uh, check out the automatic extraction. So if I put a chest on the front... Oh, oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that animation. Oh, it's so cool. Look, you can see how hot the electrodes are. That's why they degrade, because they get really hot. You can see that the electrodes with the, hot, with the heat... You know, you can see pipes, and, and when it finishes, you get to see it pour into the bucket. Oh, that's so cool. That is satisfying. I like that. Oh, look at that. We're out of power already. We have just burned through 12... Um, we have burned through about 11... I mean, 11 million RF. Um, really very quickly. So, yeah. You need a good... You need It's 512 per second. I mean, per tick. Okay, that's not a small amount of power. This thing takes a lot of power, okay? So make sure you have proper infrastructure. Otherwise, it'll be sad. If I place the chest, you can see that the steel is going in. If I come to the back and I place a chest here, I can't open it because, of course, I can't open it. Get rid of that. Oh, no, I broke it. You can see the slag is coming in there, okay? I could use conveyor belts or pipes, it wouldn't matter. So that's the arc furnace. Now in order to put items uh, in up here, I doubt we can just do that. We need to use um, hoppers. Or if you're using immersive engineering, which you should be, we could use a, a dropping conveyor belt. Anything that goes on a dropping conveyor belt gets dropped into what's underneath it. So we can easily conveyor belt in uh, items here. Sweet. Now, if I wanted to add some more gold grit, well, I got silver grit here. Say I didn't. Uh, let's test this out. So if we put the silver grit in on the left side, it, it, it indeed it goes ahead and it smelts it. If I throw it in on the right side. Oh, it's still smelting it. Hmm. Take the gold grid out, what happens? Still smelting it. Interesting. So... Uh -huh. hmm. So then how do we get 
items to input into into that slot. It's supposed to go into the... Let's go back to the arc furnace. Um, additives. Coke dust. Puts the additives to the two hatches in the top of the structure to the left and right. Okay, it says inputs and additives are put in the top, but apparently I can't add the gold dust into the additive slot using the conveyors. It's not working. I bet if I put the coke dust in, it'll go into additives. It did. So the gold dust just smelts. The coke dust goes into additives. It actually spreads itself out. Interesting. Huh. So I guess if you want to do some alloying, you do have to put it in manually. You got to put your 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 additive in manually in order to do alloying. All right? Keep that in mind. If you just pipe all of your dusts into the top slots, uh It'll just smelt them. If you want to do some alloying, you need to put your additive in here manually. So that is the arc furnace. As you use it, your graphites will degrade, electrodes will degrade, and eventually you'll have to make some more. So don't forget about it. Um, and remember, you need a lot of power. And of course, if you put a lever on this little panel and hit it, it'll turn it off. So that's the arc furnace. It's very cool. Uh, High-tech smelting does require a lot of power. So it's definitely a later game machine. Although, if you're running the excavator, uh, you've probably got enough resources to start running an arc furnace <laughs> later. So, this thing will replace your blast furnace and your furnaces. It'll do all that, uh, all the, their jobs, uh, in a 5x5x5 five by five by five form factor. So, that's the arc furnace. Very neat. Definitely high end stuff. It requires quite a bit of a resource investment. Anyway, that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for future episodes. We're we're getting there. We're getting through. Uh, we've gotten through a lot of stuff. Um, immersive engineering series won't be that long left to go. Um, I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out. Bye.